last month's iWatch centric event, Apple announced its new laptop, the MacBook. Weighing in at even less than the MacBook Air, having only one USB-C port, and having a totally redesigned keyboard, battery, and trackpad, this new machine certainly piqued our interest. Well, it's been a long wait since the MacBook was announced, and we finally have our hands on it. So that means it's time to tear it down. Hi, I'm Kate with iFixit, in for Gwendolyn, who is on temporary leave, and today we are tearing down Apple's brand new MacBook. Size-wise, the new MacBook is close to the 11-inch MacBook Air, measuring in at 28.05 centimeters wide, 19.65 centimeters deep, and at its thickest, only 1.31 centimeters high. The MacBook weighs in at 2.03 pounds, and in case you're wondering, that is less than half the thickness and almost three pounds lighter than its 2009 ancestor. It's no surprise that getting into our brand new MacBook is going to require the use of our pentalobe driver, but fortunately for us, we came prepared. Opening the MacBook carefully was a good idea as we spotted some cables connected to the rear case. Disconnecting them required some fancy lifting and prying that was reminiscent of the Touch ID cable we saw in the iPhone 5S. Opening the MacBook all the way revealed that the lower case is home to the battery and logic board. After discovering that Apple has most likely hidden the battery connector underneath the logic board, we brought out the big guns in the form of our newly minted battery isolation pick. These picks help to keep the power away from the logic board while we dig around some more. There are three cables we need to disconnect to separate the upper case from the lower. First up, under a bracket held in place by some annoying tri-wing screws, we find the three-in-one display, power, and I.O. cable that runs to the USB-C port. Next up was the display connector, and finally the audio board connector. Just like that, we have achieved separation. Now we can turn our attention to the logic board. There are only a couple screws holding it in place, and once those are removed, we carefully lift the logic board out of the case. This little board is home to the dual core Intel Core M processor with integrated Intel HD graphics 5300, eight gigabytes of Alpida Micron LP DDR3 mobile RAM, and the 256 gigabytes of Toshiba-made NAND flash storage. After a tip from Anantech, we took a closer look at the SK Hynix-made SSD RAM. We reflowed the RAM chip off the logic board to expose the SSD controller layered beneath. It looks like Apple's 2011 acquisition of Israeli flash memory controller designer Anabit is starting to bear fruit. And this SSD has a custom Apple-made controller. Next up, we fired up our eye openers in anticipation of a lot of heating and prying to get the battery out. And we were right. This new Terrace battery is firmly and totally glued in place. And to complicate matters, the battery sits down in a well, making prying it up trickier than ever. This is a 7.55 volt, 39.71 watt hour and 5,263 milliamp hour battery. That is just a hair more than what you'd get in this year's 11 inch MacBook Air, which had a 5,100 milliamp hour battery. We got our first look at the Force Touch trackpad in the 13 inch MacBook Pro released last month, and here it is again. This is a slimmer and daintier version of the trackpad we saw last month, but has all the same features, including the Taptic engine. If you're curious to see how exactly the Force Touch trackpad works, be sure to check out our video that we posted the last time we saw one, where we walk you through all the details of the new trackpad. The keyboard on this MacBook has been completely redesigned and the keys pop off easily enough after some prying with our pick. These keys now use a butterfly mechanism and use a single assembly instead of the traditional scissor mechanism that most keyboards use now. This is said to provide the keyboard with more stable and responsive keys. Lastly, we remove the retina display and USB-C port that is wedged underneath the display hinge. The display is a 12-inch Retina display with a resolution of 2,304 by 1,440 and a pixel density of 226 pixels per inch. With the display removed, we can finally get at the most controversial aspect of the new MacBook, its single port. The USB-C port is your all-in-one data transfer, power, and video output port. And hopefully you won't need to do more than one of those things at any given time because you only have one port. Just the one. And we've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. Here at iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything. So that means whenever we get a device to tear down, we give it a repairability score between one and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and one being the most difficult. The MacBook scored a one out of 10. And here's why. 
proprietary pentalobe screws continue to make opening the device unnecessarily difficult, and the new cable routing makes the procedure even trickier. The USB-C port is secured by tri-wing screws and buried under the display brackets, complicating replacement. Also being the only port, it will experience more use and wear than a typical single-purpose port. The battery assembly is entirely and very solidly glued into the lower case. The retina display is still a fused unit with no separate protective glass. If the display needs replacing, it'll cost a pretty penny. And lastly, the processor, RAM, and flash memory are soldered to the logic board. For the complete teardown, including tons of high quality, beautiful images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all teardowns and repair videos. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at iFixit and make sure to give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash iFixit.